Hello, my name is Kevin Matthews, and today I would like to talk about charcoal marie tooth disease and bracing uh, options and consideration in managing uh, charcoal marie tooth. Uh, charcoal marie tooth is an inherited disorder that affects the peripheral nervous system or the periphery or the nerves that are the furthest away from the head, the hands and the feet. Uh, typically indicated by atrophy in the hands, primarily in the area between the thumb and forefinger here, uh, and also in the lower extremities below the knee. What we're going to address today is uh, issues below the knee uh, in charcoal marie tooth. Uh, it's a hereditary disease, typically passed down, uh, and you can find much more information online uh, I found good information at the Charcot Marie Tooth Association, their website. They've got a wealth of information where they talk about bracing. Also, uh, I just thought I would do a video so I can kind of show and demonstrate some of the characteristics of Charcot Marie Tooth and different things we do as an orthodist, as orthodists, and things that we consider or should consider when uh, bracing Charcot Marie Tooth or CMT. So. CMT typically, and I will say typically, not always, uh, more often than not, presents itself in weakness below the knee and deforming changes to the feet. So what I typically see is a high arch with very prominent forefoot and pressure areas in the foot. Initially, you can make a patient with CMT much more comfortable with custom foot orthotics. Patients with CMT tend to be hesitant to wear braces and that's up to them, but bracing really can help uh, with CMT depending on the deficits of the patient. But one thing that typically is helpful is a, you know, a somewhat flexible custom foot orthotic with accommodative reliefs for prominences or uh, deformities. You can do corrective inserts that try to correct it or accommodative inserts that try to relieve those pressure areas. What's fairly common is a dropped first ray or a first toe that sits lower than the rest of the foot. So you can elevate padding on the outside of the foot and leave a relief for the big toe and the ball of the foot here to redistribute pressure and take pressure off of the first toe. And that is very helpful with patients. Now, as, as the disease progresses, and it tends to be progressive, it tends to be slowly progressive over years, but patients do tend to get weaker and weaker over time. Eventually, what happens is the patient loses their ability to actively dorsiflex their foot or pick up their toe. So what they will do is compensate by creating a steppage gait, which is basically they will, because the toe is down, they will just flex the hip and the knee more to clear the floor. And it's typically bilateral, so you'll see them walking, and I'm exaggerating a little bit, like this, and just plopping the foot down. They don't get a heel strike, which is one of the important determinants in gait. Heel strike, foot flat, and toe off. They just plop down. And you can compensate and you can get by fine like that, but if you're not paying attention and you don't pick it up quite high enough, you catch that toe, you can fall. You can also catch that toe and fold it underneath your foot and then step down and break that big toe. So for someone who has a drop foot, they really should wear braces because those gait deviations are hard on the knees, hip, and back, and over time, they will lead to to complications. And fixing a drop foot or perineal nerve palsy or fibular nerve palsy, whatever you call it, the inability to actively dorsiflex the foot can be done with a custom molded AFO, a plastic AFO that allows full range of motion but has a spring to pick up the toe. And what it does is it springs the toe up during swing phase so you don't have to pick the foot up high to clear the floor. And then it heel strike, it it 
goes down and allows you to go through the entire gate cycle, just aiding in tow pickup. Very helpful design. I make mine with padded foot plates and we can do accommodations for deformity. This one has a metatarsal raise, which is typically indicated in Charcot Marie Tooth. High arch, a lot of pressure across the forefoot. Putting a pad, a metatarsal pad, relieves some of that strain on the forefoot. Uh, and this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about a cavus arch, is a high arch. It's an inefficient arch. The higher the arch, the less flex to it. The arch should have some flex and dynamic motion to it. With this neuropathy, this peripheral neuropathy, which is a generic term for just nerve disease, for this nerve disease, they tend to, arch raises up, the toes tend to go into hammer toes, and there's a lot of pressure across the ball of the foot, right in this area here. So if you put a metatarsal support in there, right behind the ball of the foot, that relieves this. You can also put softer padding into the ball of the foot. Uh, but typically, if you just redistribute pressure across the bottom of the foot, that's sufficient. So, and another indication, you may not have a drop foot. You may have a little bit of strength, but you may have a foot slap. When your heel hits the ground, it just, it slaps. And you hear that clunk, clunk with each step. That's the same thing. The, the, the anterior tibialis, the primary dorsiflexor, also decelerates the foot as, as the heel hits the ground, holds the toe up for that rigid lever arm that we go over. If it's just weak, you may not tend to catch the toe, but you may just get a foot slap. That's the precursor to the full foot drop. So this is a very flexible design, custom molded for the foot. A uh, little bit bulky, fair amount of material. An option to this would be a leaf spring design. While this one has a full range of motion through the gait cycle, this one has flexibility, but not quite full range of motion. So it's got some strength blocking the toe going down so you don't catch your toe, but it flexes forward easily. It just, it, so you can, as you go through gait, it just flexes. This one has a front shell. Typically, they're more a back shell like this with just a narrow strut. I reinforce the strut. By reinforcing it, you can make it more narrow. And this one has a, a multiple layered padded insert uh, this one has a single density insert. This one has a, a triple density insert. This one is going to be more durable than this one, but sometimes you need that extra cushion of the soft material on top. So this is a leaf spring AFO. This is a hinged, angel, hinged AFO, free motion, dorsiflexion assist, assisting the toe pickup motion. Another favorite design is the carbon fiber AFO. This is a very lightweight, low profile design. Uh, it's got basically a calf cuff. This doesn't touch the body anywhere and it's just got a carbon plate. And this is a flexible design, goes through range of motion very well. Um, and if all you have is a drop foot, this is definitely an option. Now, this is a hard plate, so you need to wear a soft insole on top of it the insole that you take out of your shoe, put this in and put that insole on top. But that may not be soft enough. Uh, people with CMT, they tend to have calluses on the ball of their feet and when you add this hard surface, it can be somewhat uncomfortable. So you may add a custom foot orthotic, this is the wrong foot, but basically to go on top of this uh, and that can be really helpful uh, in alleviating the pressure plus also redistributing pressure in the charcoal marie tooth foot. Um, so I would definitely recommend you get the custom foot orthotic with the carbon AFO for CMT. Uh, these are typically not covered by insurance. They're not cheap. I think they're $380 a pair with us. They go up to $700 a pair with uh, some of my competitors, uh, but they are helpful and indicated if you get the custom molded AFO, you don't need this because it already has the custom molded foot plate. And again, most, most orthodists don't have their foot plates. I do. Uh, maybe it's something you could ask for from your orthodist. Uh, they call me. I'd be happy to talk to them about it. I'm with Advanced Orthopedic Designs in San Antonio. Uh, so now, 
because it tends to be progressive with peripheral neuropathy, you may lose the dorsiflexors, but you may also lose the plantar flexors. Okay. Now, before I want to, before I talk about that, what I also want to discuss is uh, balance issues with CMT. What's very common with CMT is uh, they lose those fine intrinsic muscles that we use without even thinking about it. Without intrinsic muscles, you can't stay standing because you're using those muscles. You're, as your body goes forward, you push back. If your body goes back, you kind of just lean forward and side to side. So you maintain your position in space. With CMT, you lose those muscles so you can't stand in one place. So you're kind of always shifting your weight and, and move, picking up your feet and putting down. So if you're standing in a line at the bank and you're just in line, well then you're moving. You can't just stay in one place and balance over your feet. AFOs help tremendously with that. Even these simple little carbon fiber ones give you that little bit of added stability where you can stand without moving. And what's funny is with, a, with CMT, all, all, all you need to do is just touch something and now you can stand because you can adjust your body based on just pressure from your fingertip. Touch the wall. I've, I have several uh, patients with CMT and I've got one, one guy, he's one of the greatest people I've ever met, but he just, when he's talking to someone, he just puts his hand on their shoulder and talks to them, hey, how you doing? And it, it works perfect. All it, it helps him balance and he's not constantly moving. Now with his AFOs, he doesn't have to do that, but that's one thing that he told me that he would do. So in, in gait, you need basically dorsiflexion and plantar flexion, active dorsiflexion and active plantar flexion. Plantar flexion is the push-off muscle. And typically CMT will progress to the point where you lose those push-off muscles also. And those are very important in gait. The plantar flexors basically create a rigid lever arm from heel off to toe off and push off to accelerate the leg to initiate uh, the swing phase of gait and to propel the leg forward. With CMT, with weak plantar flexors, you get no push off. So you get full, the foot doesn't, the heel doesn't come off the ground before the toe pushes off. The heel comes off the ground as the hip and the knee flex to bring it through. Perhaps a little complicated, but when you have weak plantar flexors, that makes gait much more difficult. You're using gross motor groups to try to compensate for that. The brace that I use when there's weak plantar flexors, which means that you cannot go up on your toe, okay, and, and use, you don't have to balance, just use your, the muscles of your leg to go up on your toe. If you can't do that, well then plantar flexors are weak. If you can do it, say, with both feet, but not with one feet, well you still got enough strength, they don't really need to be compensated for. But if you can't go up on your toes without lunging forward, when you can't stand in one place and go up on your toes, then you have compromised plantar flexors, and those should be taken into consideration in the brace design. Now we're talking about a stronger, more bulky brace, and there are many who argue that the brace, you want to preserve ankle motion and all of that. I've been doing this 32 years. I don't believe in that. I believe in creating optimum function for the activity that you're doing, which is walking. Now, if you, want, if you want to work on range of motion, stretch the foot out when you're at night. You know, do stretching exercises to keep that range of motion. Get a belt and pull it on your foot and, and just, just take your hand and go through all the range of motion. Believe me, you're, you, what you're going to lose is dorsiflexion range, but if you wear a brace, you should not lose that dorsiflexion range uh, if the brace is made correctly you may get tight to where you can't go beyond 90 degrees, that's okay, that's functional alignment. Uh, and again, when I brace, I'm looking for optimal function and not trying to preserve something or prevent something, I, even though we do both in the brace design, what I'm looking at is results. If you want to be able to walk two miles, uh, you should be able to do that and you can absolutely do that in this brace. What this brace is, is, and it can be made, you can make a simple solid ankle design, which works, but because it's got, and this one doesn't have the strap on it, because it's got a, a flexible strap, uh, it just kind of holds the legs in, the leg in, but as you progress, there's give to it. I much prefer the rigid front shell. 
so that it has no give, so that as, as your weight shifts forward, it locks that tibia in, which gets maximum leverage against the ankle, which this plastic will bow, and that bowing is energy being stored, and as soon as the foot comes off, it helps spring forward. And it also creates that rigid lever arm for you to roll over the toe. This, for Charcot Marie Tooth, with decreased dorsiflexion and plantar flexion, to me, in my opinion, is the best design on the planet, made out of polypropylene. You can get laminated carbon fiber ones, custom made, those work well also. The problem with the laminated carbon fiber ones, they're not adjustable. If it doesn't fit, or if you're having problems, all they can do is add pads and try to push. They cannot heat and relieve a pressure area. With polypropylene, I can modify heat and adjust this design, plus it's much less expensive to fabricate. Carbon fiber designs can cost a lot of money. This one is covered by insurance and is uh, simpler, but in my opinion, better, because it's still just in very rigid due to the long polypropylene strut incorporated in fabrication that bolsters, reinforces this plastic. What it does is it holds the foot up for swing phase. At heel strike, there's a flexion moment at the knee. Now, I call this the Texas Turbo because it propels you forward in gait. And when you wear two of these, you'll see how they basically propel you forward. Uh, but at heel strike, this, the, the, the brace wants to move forward as you progress, so it kind of kicks you forward, and all you do is allow it to kick you forward, go roll off that toe, help it push off, and go into the next step. And it really works to help propel you in gait, and it works very well. I have many patients with CMT in, in this design. Uh, I had one woman in Atlanta who wanted this design. She went to someone I knew in Atlanta. He made her a pair. She wrote me the nicest letter. She hadn't walked this well in 20 years, and she went hiking in the, oh, I forget the name of the mountains out there, not the Smokies, but uh, she was very, very happy. And there's a copy of that letter on my website. Uh, but this is an awesome design for CMT. And another reason I like this is it's wide open in the calf, so the calf can breathe. Um, it's got a single strap back here, and there's a lot less plastic than your typical solid ankle design. Also, this gets more leverage because it comes up right below the knee to get leverage against that ankle, which is a great thing. And uh, the, the traditional AFO, where this one's trimmed up here, is trimmed below the neck of the fibula where there's a nerve. So you lose almost two inches of height in me, a 5'11 guy, that is a significant amount of leverage against the ankle, the knee, and the foot. It's important that you get out of those gait deviations, find yourself a brace that is comfortable, that supports you, that if it hurts, go back and get it fixed. If they can't fix it, ask them to make it over. You should be able to get an AFO that fits and works for you. When the AFO is set up, it needs to be set up considering the heel height of the shoe, where the knee is in front of the ankle in this rigid design because if, if, if it's just at 90 degrees then as you progress at, at foot flat when you try to progress to toe off it blocks you from progressing and you'll notice that in gait. If you have AFOs like that and they feel like they block you put heel lifts underneath the brace that will kick the brace forward it will make a huge difference in your gait. Sometimes I'm not perfect, or there's different heel heights to shoes. I may not like the amount of forward lean that I have. I will add a little quarter inch, three sixteenths, three eighths heel lift to get the knee into the proper position. I will typically give the patient a couple quarter inch heel lifts in case they wear a shoe with a lower heel, but for style or whatever, but they need that knee position a little in front of the ankle. So. Hopefully I gave you some ammunition if you're treating CMT or if you have CMT and you're curious about uh, leg brace designs, AFO designs. Take care and good luck.